my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So first, lots and lots of good news. Like, I know all about this quilt now. It's so happy, so happy. So let me tell you a little backstory. I put this up on the video uh, the other day, asking if anybody recognized the border blocks these blocks here. This block is my design in the middle. It's actually also patterned in my Teach Me to Machine quilt book. Uh, these were the ones that came from a quilt along and they were not ones that I just could not remember. And I had put a label on it and not written on the label. And I have to give you a little backstory. And so I'm, when I, I've been using this quilt for a couple of years and it's always bugged me because I've loved the quilt uh, and I thought, you know, I just need to figure out where, what patterns these are, you know, where this came from so that I can update the label. And it just was driving me nuts. So that's why I thought I would just show it here, but then, you know, I couldn't wait because I had shown it. And then I thought I've got two days before that video comes up, I am going to do some research. And so I had already in the past, asked and and also i knew i made the blocks several people were like oh did you borrow the quilt no it's my quilt i made all the blocks i knew that part um but i i had asked my local friends i had asked a community of people who had sewn with me for many years years ago because i was pretty sure this was quite a while back and the reason why is because this is joanna figueroa's fabric and it is the style she was doing quite a few years ago it is not her current style of fabric and so i knew that it was an older fabric line <clears throat> and also knew that i did not use it later i probably used it right about the time that the fabric line came out so after i did the video i thought i'm going to go and dive a little bit and do a little bit of research because i have a lot of data stored way too much to sort through everything so i needed some clues so i found out i asked some friends and i also wrote to joanna and found out the name of the fabric line which was called tapestry joanna didn't know when her fabric line was printed uh, and the documents that come from moda that's a moda fabric line the documents that come from them that show the fabric line do not have a date there's no date on them so what would you do I just started Googling her name, uh, the name of the fabric line, Moda and the name of the fabric line until I found a blog post. Somebody had written about it on their blog and the blog did have a date. So I was able to date it to 2012. And then after that, I was, I had, um, I'd asked the Fat Quarter Shop if they, if just to check that it wasn't one of theirs and it was not, but they did a little digging and about the same time I found it was 2012, they wrote me back that they found it was 2012. Okay, now I had information. I really could not search in my data for tapestry. That is not something I would have written probably about the fabric. I wasn't really keeping pictures of the fabric line. And so I needed a date because what I have is every year, uh, I have just like my calendar has the project stuff. I have a, a folder with the year and then every project in it. So basically I started in 2012, looked at every project to see if this was in them. It was not. So I'm like, okay, let's go to 2023, 2013. So I did 2012, 2013. And I went about halfway through the number of projects in 2013 and found it. It was like, yes. And so what is it? This was called Sugar Blocks and it was a quilt along the blocks on the outside not the setting not the center just the outside blocks was sugar blocks by amy gibson uh, and amy is no longer um, uh, seems to be in the industry she's closed her website uh, she is on instagram still she's sharing pictures of her family and things like that uh, so so i i now had the 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 name of it so it was a 2013 it was block a month for the whole year of 2013 and they're all paper pieced i think i think they are all paper pieced or pretty close to it uh, i didn't open every pattern to look i opened about four patterns and they were all paper pieced so i was like okay it's mostly paper pieced uh, and so i think that's why now i i'm sure that there was a somebody out there that also sewed along on this but apparently it was not one of the you know ones like lots of people did or those of you who follow me uh, didn't come up with it by the time i'm filming this because i had no answers from anybody else and so i am just thrilled to now know and i have it labeled and everything so i want to show you the back because i have just a hodgepodge of fabrics that i did on the back 
way, way long time ago. And my friend Cindy, who quilted so many of my pieces and has since passed away, Cindy did the quilting on this and she did orange peels. Uh, so there you go, that's the back. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, you pick the backs you do. I know I just picked them to use up some fabric and that apparently is what I was doing with this guy. And so I'm super, super thrilled. I love this layout with 12 blocks. I'm thinking I might do that for one of our quilt alongs again. I will design or you know put out patterns for 12 blocks, not these, not these, but 12 other blocks and then the center. I think that would be really fun. This is a super fun size quilt uh, and it's good for a wall hanging or a lap quilt. Um, so maybe next year in 2024, 20, uh, right? So this is 10 years old. This was done 10 years ago is when I made that quilt. I will finish it at the end of 2013. Crazy, right? So it was so, I was so happy, so happy to figure it out. All right, my other big success <laughs> is binding on here. I went rooting around, because I remember I said I would look for maybe a different black plaid. I found I had bought extra black plaid from the line and I had, or I had put it away. I had taken it out of the blue project bin because I was only working on binding. So I just emptied the project bin and I'd totally forgotten I got extra of this and I, got, I found it, I found it because I didn't just stop. I, I decided to just look a little bit more around. <laughs> so cool, right? So I am going to do this on bias so that it will be, the binding will be, whoops, will be like this. So it'll be on bias. So I'll have it, uh, you know, cut like this. So I haven't done that yet, but it's over here. Lots and lots of good things. So we have a couple other things today. One, it is blueberry day. So we should show blue quilts. Like if you happen to have a quilt with blueberries on it, uh, that would be awesome. But it's probably a very limited number of you that have quilts with blueberries. So <laughs> instead, let's just show blue quilts. So I went and grabbed one of my, my blue quilts. This is a Lady of the Lake. That's the name of the traditional block design, Lady of the Lake. And this was in my Tour of Ireland book. Look at that. Look how fun that is. And I want to show you the quilting. Cindy quilted this one too, but look at the quilting. Uh, there is this great um, sort of half flower or half sun or something, whatever you want to think in the, in the basket. I just love it. And then there's sort of kind of a flower down below. So cool. And then the back is one of my older fabric lines. So from quite a few, quite a few, many years ago. So show your blue quilts to celebrate Blueberry Day. So the other things I want to talk about is I want to put up Sweet Memories, the basket quilts, tell you a little bit about my, where I am with that. And then we're going to look at scrappy binding for the Halloween quilt. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to put the critters up today. So, I mean, it's, I'm not going to work on them, so we'll see. We'll see if we talk critters. I had it on the calendar to talk critters, but um, oh, I have to also put the quilt on my back wall in here, switch it out, because the other one has to go back to the fat quarter shop. So we're going to show you that. But first, let me just take this stuff down, you know, take, I have to take, take it down so I can show you the other thing. So there are my basket blocks, and that is from the quilt that is in Summer Memories. And here is, here is the quilt. I think it's called, yeah, it's called the Summer Picnic Quilt. And I am doing one less uh, row, well, column, one less column. So I'm doing three by four on mine. And I have another block. Here we go. I love this little pink fabric with the little, like little oranges. <laughs> so darling, so darling. And this one has bees. The red one has bees and I've had that fabric for quite a while. So let me put that up here. So that means now I have to do four more blocks. One, two, three, four. Uh, and I started thinking about that. I thought, you know, <clears throat> I, cut, I cut the one block out the other night and I thought, you know what? If I just keep going, I can cut all four of these. Did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to show you what I did. I cut all four, but I have to keep track because there are different style blocks. 
This one has uh, all pink, all, all the uh, color, either pink or red, facing down. Here it has all of the same color up here, but the outer two face in. Uh, here the outer two are blue. Same with this. Outer two are blue, but these are rotated differently. So there's different style blocks, and I wanted to disperse those more evenly since I was doing less blocks. So uh, here is... Here's what I have going on. Okay, alrighty, let's take a look. I think I can, let me just push the camera back a second. And I'll just scoot it down here, down on the table. So I, whoops, let go around. So what I did is I've got each block uh, done the same way. You can see. Uh, and I took and put the page number, that's the block's page number, what row and position. But I'll talk about that in another second. So this is like the sashing, these are all for the half square triangles, here is the bottom of the basket, these sides, they're all done. So I've got that floral with the pink, oh, and the red, the red polka dot. And then this one has a blue stripe, and then red text and a pink floral, there we go. I have to keep them in order because I sort of did them as the next, this is the last one in the third row, the first one in the fourth row, middle one for the fourth row, this pretty blue with a red sort of small circles and then this bigger pink dots and they all have a different background and so last one. I've got my note, which uh, page I'm doing it from. I've got this floral, blue floral, a red, bigger red print with pink on it. And then this is actually the same pink design as the red in the last one. So those are, those are for the half square triangles. So I've got these all set up. That way I can just work through each of these boards. Now it does tie up these boards because apparently I only have four boards in this size. I have the bigger boards. Well, that was just what the block was on. So I have uh, three of these bigger size boards. <clears throat> so if I'm doing something else and I need a board, I just have to use the bigger one. Although I am thinking now that I need a few more of this, uh, this size here, which is the 14 inch. This one is the 14 inch. The bigger one is 18. Yeah. So that's, that's an 18 inch. You can see, let me just pick one up. And they don't, they, they, the fabrics stay down there pretty good. I mean, this, it's smooth on the back. And so they just sort of work nicely. So this is the 14 and this is the 18. And I buy them, it's just easier. I do not feel like messing around making them. Of course you can make them and people do. So these are all stacked and I will keep, I'm gonna try to work through these. That is a goal for me to really uh, focus <laughs> so I can get those done. And then I have the border of the floral and I did buy that other fabric with the scenery which will I, I was thinking for the backing but you know at the end I'll probably audition it for a border as, as an alternate as the border so I'll have the two to audition as a border the the rest of the blocks I am not going to sew them until I do the other four so I think I will sew that bottom half um all the blocks and then audition their position just in case, just in case I want to f switch something around because I'm not going to make any more blocks. Uh, and then I'll be able, and it'll be gorgeous. Isn't it going to be gorgeous? Oh, I'm so in love. It is awesome. Now we have a few more things. We're going to talk about a scrappy binding, but before that, we're going to go to the other side because that's what we're going to talk about scrappy binding on the side of the table. And then I am going to show you, uh, uh, where I hang a quilt, what it looks like when there's no quilt hanging there. So you can see the curtain rod I use, etc., etc. So I'll meet you on the other side. So for the look behind the scenes, here's where I'm normally standing, here's where I was just standing, and the camera that is always on my desk, and the lighting system that is always up in my room since I film every day. And on the back side, this is the family room of my home, and so there is a fireplace. Yep, that's a fireplace. And up above is a regular curtain rod. Nothing fancy, it's just a curtain rod. And that's what I hang the quilt on. Uh, and I have white boards because these help with the um, airflow from the fireplace, particularly in the winter, there's draft. And also it's a visual because the quilt usually hangs down and then I just don't have this black uh, surround. 
of the fireplace, the slate. I just don't have that visual. I've got it covered up with the whiteboards. And the quilt then will hang, you know, hang down in front of this. So there's the regular curtain rod for all those that wonder how you hang things. Just buy a curtain rod. Okay, now I am going to get the ladder and hang a quilt up there. I pulled a couple of options. I could hang the spool and threads up here, which is kind of nice and summery colors. It's in my sleepover fabric. I could also hang this one, which is a free pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I might do that because I really love it and I really haven't looked at it hanging in here at all. I don't think I've had it hanging in here. And then my rainbow quilt is the other one. Now the problem is the rainbow one, and I believe this one, is, are just a little bit wider than my uh, curtain rod, but we'll see. I'll put, I think I'm going to try this one first, see what it looks like. Well, here this one is. The, the problem here is that it is not very long. <laughs> it's a square quilt and it's more like maybe a you know, children's size quilt or tabletop or size. And so when I'm filming over here, it'll be like this, which I guess isn't so bad behind me. Uh, but it's not, I really prefer it to have been, to hang, for hanging to be one more, you know, unit lower, like have one more section down here. Then it would have been a better size for hanging in this spot because I do have the curtain rod pretty much up, up to the top of the ceiling. So, that means you know everything has to be a little bit longer. If I had the curtain rod down a little bit lower, that would make it a little bit different. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I am going to put the, um, the rainbow quilt up. So let me do that. Well, I changed my mind. I decided to put the scissors and spool up there for a while. This is another of my friend Wendy Shepard's patterns. And so I'll link you in the description box below to that. I also have the single one I did there. And then I switched out and put the little bird's nest from one of my books up there to have. But you can see how, see this isn't wide enough and the, the um, boards are not tall enough. So you see the black there and uh, yeah. Oh well, it'll be that way for a little while till I change it out again. Or maybe I might just right after this video put up the rainbow quilt. You never know. Stay tuned, you never see what's, what might be there next time we come on this side of the table. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick scrappy binding thought process. So for the Halloween quilt, uh, basically I'm looking at the length, you know, like the short length. I'm going to take the short length. How long is this and how many pieces of fabric do I want in here for it to be scrappy? That's how I approach a scrappy binding. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's logical. So if I want to have like four pieces across here, that means if I fold it in half, that's two pieces, the length of two pieces. Fold in half again, that's the length of, that'd be four pieces. And how wide is that? It is about seven inches wide. So if I want to have maybe, maybe five pieces across, then I could do maybe five inch pieces across here. So what I'll do is take the fabrics and I'll probably just use mostly the fabrics that were in in the quilt. So that's this grouping here on top. Uh, I don't think I used the lightning bolt, but I will just go through these and I will take strips for binding and cut them uh, five inches and sew them. So let me just cut a few and then sew them together so you can see what it looks like. So in the case of the eyeballs, I will just cut across here because this is like a five and a half inch strip. And so I would, I do one and a half inch binding. So I might cut like three of these so that, or, you know, I could cut four, but I'm probably going to have more than five fabrics I'm using. So there you go. I've got two, I've got two. And if I wanted to do another one, I could just, you know, come down here and make one more to put in the mix. And then what I will do is alternate these. So then I would come and do maybe four, you know, three to four of another fabric that's in the, in the quilt. And so I will make a scrappy, a scrappy piece, little chunks. And then all these little chunks are going to get sewn together. And I'm going to sew them on bias um, so that they have an angle. So they're angled and not straight across because I think the angled for the binding looks really darling. 
All right, so I'm going to just cut across here and then some five inch chunks and then whatever this chunk is. What is it? It's about six. That'll go in there. So now I'll go to another one. And then I'll just alternate these to make some binding. Let me just do a couple more and I'll sew it. So this is kind of an experiment doing it uh, <laughs> this way. And I forgot that the seam allowance is gonna like take up some space. So let me just push this back. So anyways, it's gonna take more than five to go across because I only made them about five inches long. If I made them about seven or eight inches long, then five across would probably work. But I actually like this. I like that they're shorter. That's kind of the idea I had, so it's coming out fine. It's just I need to cut more of them than I was thinking. So there, so it'll look like this when it's done. So it gives enough variation. I just don't, you know, I wanna have more variation so that it's in balance with the top rather than some big chunk like this of, you know, one color that's like half of the, half of the bottom. It just, that doesn't appeal to me. So I have a few more of them to cut up, like I didn't get the, um, the, those mushrooms and I didn't get a couple of the ones over here yet so I have to have to grab those and cut some pieces of that so this is what I'll do for the binding the scrappy binding pretty fun all right let's go wrap it up so thank you everybody for your help and guesses with the sugar blocks for trying to <laughs> get me to the right on find out what they are so it's not documented I am so happy I can't tell you how happy I am and if you're making the baskets along with me I would love to see your version of the baskets and you're going to share a blue quilt today for blueberries hey if you're doing scrappy binding show me that too so I love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the Sloan zone I will see you online <laughs>